Manually sharpening a drill requires certain basic equipment. To start with, you need a good and well-balanced pedestal grinder. A water container placed close by because you're going to have to cool down the tool regularly while you're grinding it. You want the pedestal grinder and its grinding wheels to be particularly sharp. So you're going to want to have a Desmond dresser and dress the wheel every now and then to keep it cutting properly. If you're going to sharpen a drill, you want it to be accurate. So you're going to need a drill point gauge to verify that you're sharpening the drill correctly. And obviously, you're going to need a drill bit that needs sharpening. Now this half inch drill bit was seriously worn on its end. So I've basically just ground it off flat so that we can see what the web of the drill looks like when the chisel edge isn't there. I got the big boy out again so that we can better see what's required for sharpening the tip of this drill. Three things have to happen simultaneously to sharpen successfully a drill. You have to produce a chisel edge that is at 45 degrees from the two cutting edges. Now that chisel edge has to be bang on center and it has to describe as straight a line as possible. Remember, 45 degrees from the two cutting lips. Second thing that has to happen is produce your cutting lips. And they have to be of identical length and at 59 degrees from the axis of the drill. Now the included angle of the drill tip will be 118 degrees, which is the standard tip angle for working in mild steel and most mild metals. Third thing that you have to do is produce a back clearance or clearance angle. That permits the cutting edge to penetrate the surface. Now that angle should describe approximately an 8 to 12 degree angle. Now, 8 degrees for harder metals, 12 degrees for softer metal. If you're cutting very mild metals, the back clearance can even go up to 16 degrees. Now it's important when you sharpen a drill that you get a nice unified surface. So it's important to properly position yourself and move in a constant motion when you're sharpening. The proper movement for sharpening is to place the two cutting edges on a horizontal plane. Once the cutting edges are horizontally placed, the length of the drill shall also be placed horizontally. Then you displace the drill to get that 59 degree angle. You're going to push the drill into the grinding wheel and pivot upwards as you're grinding. You push and you pivot upwards as you're grinding. But it is crucial that as you pivot, you do not turn the drill. If you twist the drill when you pivot, your chisel edge is going to end up with an S form. That's going to increase the length of the chisel edge and make it very difficult to drill. So, to summarize, horizontal, horizontal, angle, push, pivot, without twisting. We're just about ready to start sharpening our drill, but before we do that, we want to make sure that our grinding wheel is sharp and ready to cut. Just a little sharpening up. So, let's start sharpening. Remember, cutting lips or cutting edges horizontal, length of drill, horizontal, 59 degrees offset, we're going to push into the grinding wheel, pivot, without twisting, very important. Now, it's hard enough to get the angle, the chisel edge, and the back clearance all in one movement. But it's even harder if you flip-flop around from side to side. So a good suggestion, would be to complete one side first. Do one side, grind it down a little further than required, then turn the drill over and do the other end, or the other side, 
and bring it slowly back to center. Avoid the flip-flopping. It makes things complex and makes it a little more difficult to get our 59 degrees. So let's do it. So, horizontal, cutting lips horizontal, 59 degrees, and push into the grinding wheel, and pivot without twisting. Now you may have noticed that I'm pushing and pivoting without twisting, but I'm not pivoting very much. Take a look at the diameter of the grinding wheel. I'm holding my drill above the center of the grinding wheel, and the curvature of the wheel helps with the clearance angle that I want on the drill. Because of the curvature of that wheel, I don't have to pivot as much to get my 8 to 12 degrees back clearance. So now would be a good time to measure our angle. We want 59 degrees from the axis of the drill. And we're going to use for that our drill point gauge. And we're going to use the 59 degrees gauge part of this tool. Now a gauge means a measuring tool that measures by comparison. So we're going to gauge the angle that I just produced by comparing it to the angle on this tool. That looks quite acceptable. So we can move on to the second side because I see that we have our 59 degrees, we have our back clearance, and we have the beginnings of a nice chisel edge. The sharpening of the second lip is going to be just a little bit more difficult because obviously we're going to have to do exactly the same movements that we did on the first lip, but this time we're going to have to stop when the length of this second lip becomes identical to the length of the first, or if you wish, when the chisel edge is right on center. So we'll have to go a little more delicately on this second lip. We should be just about there, so it'd be a good time to measure. So I'm going to want to verify all my angles and all my clearances, and my chisel edge to make sure that everything's equal, even, and on center. So I'm going to verify one of my cutting lips, turn 180 degrees, verify my second cutting lip, turn it again so that the chisel edge appears as a point, and then turn it 180 degrees and verify that that point falls on the same spot on the scale of the gauge portion of this tool. Check my back clearance. Check my cutting lips to ensure that they're even, nice, and equal. Everything here looks fine. So it would be a good time to test the drill and see if it cuts properly. I've mounted my drill in a drill chuck in this drill press. I've also found a piece of scrap steel and mounted it properly in a drill press vise that's firmly leaning on a stop so that the vise can't spin around if ever this drill catches in the hole that it's producing. Now, the piece of steel that we're going to be cutting is a piece of 4140, which is a medium carbon alloy steel. It's pretty tough stuff, so this will give my drill a good test. I've got my RPM set at around 400, which is at the lower end of the speed that I'm looking for, but I don't want this to spin too rapidly because I really want to see how the drill is cutting. So let's drill.
Now seeing that we're going to remove the drill from the drill chuck, for safety, we make sure that the safety stop on the switch is activated so that this machine cannot start on its own and injure me while I'm removing the drill. Now let's take a look at this and see what we have. First off, we should check if the drill fits snugly in the hole that I've just produced. I see here that I have maybe five or six thousandths of an inch of play on my drill, which is to be expected. A hand sharpened drill cannot be accurate within a thousandth of an inch. The holes that drills produce, it's important to say that they're always a little larger than the drill. If they weren't larger than the drill, the drill would jam in the hole that it's producing. So, four or five thousandths of an inch here, maybe even a little less, that's quite acceptable. If we look at the finish on the wall of the hole, the finish is quite nice. The drill has no discoloration on the heel of the tip, which is a good indication that nothing is rubbing and that I have enough back clearance. And my chisel edge has a slight S discoloration, which indicates to me, since the S discoloration is quite even, that this chisel edge is working properly and that it's bang on center. So, a job well done. Now, it's no time to get frustrated. For me, to sharpen a half inch drill takes maybe 30 seconds to a minute. But I've been working in this trade for over 30 years and I've sharpened thousands of drills. So what you need is practice. Your first drills are going to be a little frustrating, but keep at it. Eventually you'll get quite good. And the few minutes that it takes to properly sharpen a drill will end up saving you hours and hours of work. Because using a drill that doesn't cut properly, while it's frustrating, it doesn't give a nice quality of work, and it wastes a lot of time. So it's worth sharpening. Good sharpening. <laughs>